So I'm gonna get ready to put these cookies in the oven, but let me taste one of these. They are so, so good. But look at that, they've just got a little brown, a little crunch on the outside, but. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. and this is my little kitchen so thank you for joining me uh, I just got done with pumpkin season this weekend it was a lot of fun meeting all of you and I dress up in different costumes because I don't know I just have fun doing that so anyway it was great seeing y'all I hope you guys are enjoying your fall today in my little kitchen we're gonna make pumpkin oat chocolate chunk cookies uh, that's a mouthful uh, but I say chocolate chunk because I use a chocolate bar chopped up instead of chocolate chips. Uh, it, but feel free to use chocolate chips. That'll work perfectly fine as well. I just think um, the chocolate bar uh, melts, the you know, the chocolate chunks melt a little bit better. And um, when the cookie is done, they stay softer instead of uh, hardening up like a chocolate chip can do but anyway it may be depending because i might cook my cookies too long i don't know but we're gonna make pumpkin oat chocolate chip cookies because it's all about pumpkin i love pumpkin and i use pumpkin puree not pumpkin filling so the other thing i say too is that though this video i try and have my recipes talking wise uh, close to what the recipe is or accurate but please follow the recipe online you can always get all my recipes online with the video it's all good so anyway let's do this I've got one cup of butter that means two sticks room temperature softened makes life easier two uh two eggs but it's really one egg and one egg yolk makes a little richer cookie I have two cups of flour I have about one cup and one third of oats, I think. I have about one and a half cups of brown sugar. I have, I think around a half a cup of uh, white sugar. Let me see, did I get that right? Yes, I have about a two thirds cup of uh, white sugar and about one and one third cups of brown sugar. I have about a half a teaspoon of baking powder. I have about one teaspoon of baking soda. I have two teaspoons of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ginger, but you know, on the spices, you can vary it. And the other thing, see, I told you, I gotta look at my notes. Um, the other thing, you can also use pumpkin pie spice. I would probably go at least two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, but also add an extra teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, but I choose to go separately. So let's do a little bit of nutmeg in there too. Maybe a quarter teaspoon because nutmeg can be powerful just like ginger can. Uh, but this is about a half a teaspoon of ginger and two teaspoons of cinnamon. I'm just gonna do a couple of scrapes here. And I think that's about it. Oh. You can use powdered nutmeg too, but I tell you, I love using the nutmeg nut. It just, oh, just smells so nice. I love all of these warm spices. I don't know where my jar went. I'll just put that right on the corner there. Okay, are we ready to go here? I have about just a little less than a cup of pumpkin puree. So anywhere from three quarters, but definitely no more than a cup of pumpkin puree. And I'm debating on this one, whether I should use vanilla or to make this cookie, I don't know, just really a little bit more fall. I might add a teaspoon or whatever of maple syrup. So, and this is pure maple syrup, not, you know, like 
you know, other maple syrup. This is like pure maple syrup. So it's got a lot of flavor. It's got that nice, warm, rustic flavor to it. So I'm gonna try that. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully they'll taste good. So anyway, okay, we'll get going. So we're in my kitchen, my little kitchen, making pumpkin oats chocolate chip cookies. So let's get our butter going. We're gonna cream that. Oh yeah, let me get my little spatula so I can scrape down the sides of the bowl. Look at this, isn't this so cute? I just love having fun stuff in my kitchen, you know? So I'm just gonna scrape this down a little bit. Okay. Get it all creamy. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my brown sugar and my white sugar. I almost added the flour. Yikes. Let me get that to whoops. And then I'm gonna go ahead. No, this is what I want to do. Because I just need a yolk from one egg. I'm going to scrape down the sides again. I finally got myself a clear bowl for... I don't know why I got a new KitchenAid <laughs> mixer, but I did, and I really like this yellow color. <clears throat> so we're just gonna let this go for a minute, just so it gets really nice and blended and creamy. Okay, I think we've got this creamed enough. I'm gonna add in my egg or eggs, I should say. Let me see if I can do this. Sometimes it works, most of the time it works. I'm just gonna get the yolk in there, or the egg whites in this little dish here. Oh yeah. It's working out. Awesome. So I'm gonna add the yolk in there and then one egg, room temperature. Whoa. I messed that one up. I hit the egg too hard on this thing. Oh dear. I hit the egg too hard on the thing. I almost lost half my egg. So we're just gonna let that go for a minute. I forgot to get a little salt here. And I forgot to mention I have my oven, depending on your oven, I have mine set at 375. And so I have two racks. So we're gonna cook the, uh, bake the cookies about 10 minutes and then we're gonna switch them and maybe cook them uh, about another five minutes. So we're gonna get that going here. Then I'm gonna add in my pumpkin puree. Jeez, I gotta get a spoon. Get the rest of it out. scrape down the side so the pumpkin can get thoroughly mixed in with this because I'm hoping the pumpkin is really kind of the main ingredient. Main ingredient. Okay. I think I got everything. And then I'm just going to add in maybe, let's get a
Here's a teaspoon. Well, it's really a half a teaspoon. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of maple syrup. I mean, these are gonna be like good cookies, I think. And I wanted oats because, I don't know, that just gives a little more depth, a little more, um, I don't know, just a slight crunch, you know, to the cookie. A little bit more of a chew. Scrape it down again. Whoa. I guess I should do this, huh? No, well, maybe not. I'm good. Scrape off my spatula thing here. Okay, so I've got the two cups of flour. I'm going to go ahead and add in the baking powder. The baking soda. Hopefully I told you guys how much that was. I think it was one teaspoon of baking soda, and about a half a teaspoon of baking powder. I was good. Oh yeah, here's the salt. I don't know, maybe about a quarter teaspoon. I did use salted butter, so I don't wanna do it too much. About a quarter teaspoon. Um, where's my, ah! Oh. Keep forgetting all this stuff. Let's mix that in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and mix in my spices. I kind of like mixing it in with the flour when I remember it to do that because I think it gets incorporated much better instead of just dumping it all in, you know, um, the wet ingredients separately. So I'm just gonna mix this in a little bit. And then the oats and flour can be separate. Oh, I, the other thing I wanted to tell you, I love these measuring cups. They've got a nice wooden handle. It's copper. I just, they kind of look, um, or make me feel, I guess, a little vintage, a little, I don't know, something. But I went ahead and got these on Magnolia's website because I've really been looking for, you know, some measuring cups that have, you know, a big enough handle, but wasn't that basic metal thing. So anyway, I got these. I just really kind of like them. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in there. But we're gonna go slowly, so. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the oats. Hopefully they all get mixed in there. Just enough so it's incorporated. Oops, did the wrong one. I just wanna make sure there's no flour left on the bottom. Sometimes the beater doesn't get all the way to the very, very bottom and scrape the bottom. So yes, this is what I do, you guys, because I think there is so much goodness left on the beater that I like to scrape my beater off. I'm sorry to say, but I really do with my cakes and I should really make cupcakes too. I, it's been a while since I've made cupcakes or anything like that. So I think this is done. We're just going to make sure the bottom is incorporated and it feels like it to me. Now we're going to add, oh, I forgot to chop up the rest of this, um, where's my knife? There we go. I forgot to chop up the, the rest of this chocolate here. So if you want big chunks, little chunks, you, you know, you make up your mind on that one. I mean, it does take a little time instead of just having already made, you know, chocolate chips. 
but I don't know. I just like using the chocolate bar and chopping them up a little bit. But chocolate chips work fine in here. And the nuts that I'm gonna use, the pepita, or um, if you don't want that crunch in your cookies, I mean, that's optional. D -d -d you know, you don't have to do that. But it's just a little bit. You might get, you know, a couple of, um, of the pumpkin seeds, you know, in a cookie. It's not like I want a lot. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and add this in there. Along with this, and along with this. So I think it's about two cups. Is that right? Did I say it? Oh, yeah, about, you know, one and a half, two cups. I think I have one, two, three. Yeah, at least one and a half cups. Might be two. So I'm gonna fold these over. Because if you're gonna put chocolate in something, you might as well put chocolate in it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add in a little bit of the nuts. Because I like a little crunch in my cookies. So like for a sugar cookie, no. Snickerdoodle cookie, no. Well, snickerdoodle, I wouldn't mind like a little, um, chopped up uh, almond, uh, slivered, no, not sliced almonds, just a little broken up a little bit and just put a little topping on that. But you know, snickerdoodles, you know, the traditional kind, you don't have uh, nuts in them. But you know, that's why I like cooking and you know, some baking, um, because you can kind of make it your own. So anyway. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and I'll get our baking sheets out. Okay, this is what my dough looks like. You can see the specks of chocolate and some of the nuts. It's gonna be really good. Okay, I've got my cookie sheets here ready to go. I guess I should have taken this down or out of here. Ugh. And so, I think for these cookies, just be careful because they may spread a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna pile them or scoop them just a little bit higher and not flatten them out. So let's see how that goes. So I'm just gonna take, I, I'm, for some reason, I'm not a fan of the cookie scooper. I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not doing it right, but it just never seems to work as well for me. So I'm just gonna use a tablespoon and another spoon to help me scoop it out. So I'm gonna get these all ready. So it's about a tablespoon. Just gonna kind of round it a little bit so they're not all squirrely. I wanna ask you guys, do you guys like these silicone little things here. I gotta get a bigger one for these cookie sheets, but do you guys like these or do you like using the parchment? I really like having something on top of a cookie sheet or a baking sheet because cleanup is so much better. Okay, there we go. And if they do spread out after you take, take them out of the oven, just kind of use something like this just to kind of scoot the edges in. I'm gonna scoot this up here a little bit so I can get one more. Oops. All right. Oh man, they smell so good, you guys. Okay. This one probably needs a little bit more here. A little tiny. Okay, so I've got one to go. I'll do this one and then I'll come back. So I have them. I've got a little more cookie dough left. 
So I've got the cookies on the cookie sheet. And so I'm gonna put them in the oven, double rack. So I'm gonna cook them about 10 minutes on the rack and then switch it. Uh, maybe, maybe cook them from five to eight minutes, switch it and maybe cook it another five minutes or more, just so they start turning just a little bit brown around the edges, but you still want it soft in the center. So here we go. Oops, I gotta get this. Ugh. And hopefully they'll be good. switch the cookie sheet so the cookies have time to be on you know both of the racks evenly so anyway okay I'll see you back here in maybe about 15 minutes okay we're back about 15 minutes later let me show you where's my hot pad go <laughs> they smell so good but they're you know kind of brown on top a little you know, I think they're very much done. I probably could have taken them out maybe a minute sooner, but I think they'll still be good. So I'm just gonna put them here. We're gonna taste this little one here. Chris right now is playing poker with the guys. So he'll be home really, really late. And I think I'm gonna take some of these cookies over to a friend's house and then maybe bring some over to Deb as we go walking tomorrow. So, you know, cause I'm a cookie fiend and I would eat all of these, which I don't really need. So anyway, let's, oh, it's, it's a little hot. Let me give it a few minutes. So I'm gonna get ready to put these cookies in the oven, but let me taste one of these. They are so, so good. But look at that, they've just got a little brown, a little crunch on the outside, but. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I can taste the chocolate, the spices. Okay. The pumpkin. I really like this. Okay, here are the cookies. They're all done. They are so, so good. And here's the one that I have. Oh, it's just so good. And these are the ones that last that I'll stick in the oven and get ready to cook. Hi guys, I'm back. Finally got the cookies done. It's kind of the next day because this weekend at the pumpkin patch was kind of crazy, but it was great seeing all of you. Anyway, these are the pumpkin oat chocolate chunk cookies. And I tell you, they are so good. Uh, they were great uh, coming right out of the oven, but with the nice soft chocolate. And I just uh, sprinkled just a hint of sea salt on top of it. Oh, it even goes along with the pumpkin and the spices and that little hint of a crunch of, a, of the pumpkin seed nut. So anyway, these are really good. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I really like this. They're almost like the top of a pumpkin muffin maybe without the strudel or something. But anyway, these are really, really good. I hope you give this recipe a try over at amyrolloffslittlekitchen.com or go to my YouTube channel. I would so, so appreciate this. But we're in my little kitchen, so from me to you, I hope you keep cooking and baking and just having a good time in this wonderful place that gathers people around, food and conversation. So anyway, thanks for joining me at my little kitchen. Until next time, 